All right, let's get to it. Strength training today with all the best moves. And I've got some gliders or sliders, whatever you want to call it, with me. So we're going to use those on our feet, on our hands. So if you don't have that, you can come up on your toes as I talk. If you don't have those, maybe cloths or uh, newspapers or something like that that you can glide on. Any piece of clothes or something like that is what you need if you don't want to spend a little bit of bucks on some gliders. Yeah. All right. Let's get it started. So you're going to move your shoulders coming up on your toes. My name is still Bria, and I'll guide you through an amazing class today with a lot of strength, especially core training, when we do those gliders and then legs and everything. Twisting. So jumping or putting your hands at your hips and doing some circles. This class will not be with a lot of jumping, so mainly warming up to get a little bit of heat in the body and then all sorts of different things. And have you noticed, I've got candles for you today because here in Denmark it's getting cold right now, it's getting more dark, so I thought candles is what we need to have a coast time, you and me. Three, two, one, jumping jacks. Get your pelvic floor involved, squeezed in a little bit as you jump, or if you don't jump, continue with this if you're good. This would be an easier version. Yep. And then I didn't mention anything about music. So this video would be without music. So you can always find some sort of music that you like, push play, and then hopefully that will make sense to you. All right? Three, two, one. Then you're going to walk, maybe slow, maybe fast. You're going to move your arms like like an angry kid walking on the streets. That's the image I get. So if you haven't encountered a lot of training and exercises with sliders, they are amazing for creating a lot of strength also in the body where you're not normally focusing or giving attention. All right, let's squat. Because we have a bit of resistance when we use the sliders with our hands on the floor, with our feet. And that builds extra strength and extra challenge to the <laughs> muscle tissue. So, yeah, amazing way of working out. I like it. I don't think I've done an English one with those before. So, welcome. <laughs> so, I'm squatting and I hope you just copy what I do here. So squatting downs with toes pointing slightly out. Let's do two more. Sitting down. Want those legs warmed up. Then I'm walking to the edge here because we're going to do plank, walkout planks. So you might want to shake your wrists a little bit. <laughs> and then walk to the front, oh, holding your planks on your toes or on your knees. Maybe do some shoulder circles. And then you can walk your hands back towards your feet. So that which is a little bit of hello and good day to your body, your core. Let's do it one more time. Now, I didn't even mention any weight equipment, but of course, if you have, bring that. And I'm standing on like a huge mat here, so... If you don't have an exercise mat, maybe a yoga mat is great. One more time. And this time we'll challenge a little into everything just a little bit more. Take one knee in, hover it over the floor, extend it out, other leg. Just gonna do that for six, five, navel in, four, three, two, one. Walk your hands back. Lunges, and we're gonna do it in a dynamic way. So you can put one leg back. I don't, I don't care which one. <laughs> you begin with opposite leg, but really go back, far back, and let that back knee not hit the ground. <laughs> but actually, mine is kind of just, just getting down there. 
keep your core a little bit engaged and your spine tall. Stepping back. Still keeping hip width distance. There's not enough space here, but you can just continue <laughs> where you're doing what you're doing. When you step back, not line dancing, step a little bit out to the side. And do four, three, two, and one. Yeah. All right. Arms out like this. Catch his arms. Put your fingers out. And then you take your elbows back without taking your ribs to the front. So ribs in, tall spine, and then you bring your elbows as far back. Draw them down as you can. And then to the front, up again. This is an amazing way of working with the shoulders. So this one, we can actually do down on the floor where we lift up our, our sternum or our chest. <coughs> so let's do that in just a moment, one more time. I just want us to do a bit of squats first and then we can come down. So <coughs> I like my, my bar here with weights on. So if you don't have it, just some weight somewhere or everything without any weight. So toes out, we're going to walk or work with the distance in between your feet. So you might just do, your, if you have a normal, <laughs> do your normal distance. Sit down and try to follow my pace. Now I don't have a rhythm to follow any beat. So if you want a beat, <laughs> down, down, up, up. So this would be more what I would say regular for me at least distance in between my legs. So I'm pretty comfortable here. Remember to breathe and then do one more. Yep. And then we're going to shorten the distance. So hip width a little bit wider and then sit down. So it's hard. Just continue where you are not to arch the back and do what I call the duck tail. I want to keep my pelvis somewhat tucked in, the core involved, especially, I think, when I do these squats with a small distance. So when I do this squat, I feel it more on my quadriceps, it's called, on my front thighs. Whereas if I go wider, and I try that in a bit, I feel it more. Or I feel it also <laughs> might be the right way to say it on the inside and the outside. Two. And last one. Ah, yep. Then we're going to go wide. And if you can, toes pointing more out than you normally would. Keep the knees in the direction of the toes. We don't want them to drop in as we sit down. All right. One, two. Three, four, up. One, two. Take a look at your own knees, your own toes. I hope you feel this more in the inside, in a seam, oh, seam, seam of the thigh and the outer edge of the glutes. deep breaths, especially if you go with a heavy weight. Let's do four, three, two, and then go really low, one. Ah, and then just a few narrow ones. Let's just do four, one, oh, let's count down, four, three, Sit low, two, and one. Now, let's call it the day for this one for now. If you felt anything, what I call impingement in your hip, it might be when you did the narrow one. If that doesn't work for you, don't worry, just go a little wider. We, have, we don't have a lot of space in the hip, 
uh, when we kind of bend down like that, and some feel it and some don't. So do that kind of squat that, that helps you the most. I'm putting out my, my little t uh, towel here, and we're gonna do what I call uh, the cactus hands again, as I <laughs> mentioned earlier, but in this way. So take your toenails down, lift your chest up, elbows as high and hands as high as you can. Spread out your fingers, draw your elbows back and down, and then kind of swimming, <laughs> swimming your arms to the front. Maybe going a little bit lower with your core here, and then lift up high, high, high. Bring the elbows back and down. And again, not too fast. I really want you to lift the elbows away from the floor as high as you can. Bring them back without tucking the shoulders towards the ears. Pelvic floor in, glutes in, breathe, let's do four. So I'm not doing a whole lot because I want you to <laughs> really engage the muscles instead of just doing like a gazillion half bad ones, okay? Two more. Lift high with your chest as well. And one. Elbows down, preferably on a mat or anything that's a little bit softer than just a concrete or wooden floor. All right, here we go. Look to the front, elbows under the shoulders, hands down. Lift up your hip a little bit, lower down a little bit. <laughs> so, really strong core. And remember, strong core is important for health, for option, or what do you think, option, but often less back pain. When your core is strong and you can support your back muscles with the front. Last dip and last lift. Excellent. Oh, stretch out. Then, now it's time. Now it's time to bring out your gliders and actually just, just use one, so. And it might make some noise on the floor, at least I do. <laughs> and my gliders have opposite directions, so one uh, is a kind of, kind of something fabric and the other one is more plastic-like, so you can, if you have like something like this, you can just choose which one, which directions <laughs> makes most sense on the floor that you have. So put it under your left foot, and then you're gonna glide it back and do a lunge. And we don't need to bring the leg back as far as we can, but of course the further back we come, the better. Instead, try to keep the knee slightly bended because otherwise we'll just, it feels like we only get the, hand, the hip flexors. And I want you to get the thighs in as well. And obviously, right leg is, working as well but don't feel any pain in the hip flexors get that left knee down and up yep push the leg back and bring it up. And again, slow pace here is the best. Three more. Going down, keeping knee stacked over ankle or knee can go a little bit above ankle, but still kneecap and toes in that forward direction. And the last. So I hope you feel it in your thighs. You can do your elbows, move, <laughs> dance, <sighs> breath. <sighs> 
opposite leg. Make sure you don't fall, drop in on the arch there. So you kind of go like this. This is not knee and toes in the direction. See the difference? Yep. <laughs> okay, here we go. Right leg back, and I'm always mirroring you. I know some people are confused about it. So I have to be honest. I am teaching fitness and yoga in person. How much is it? 10 hours a week or so. And there I always mirror people. So I stand in front of them like I'm doing now, and I can't get my foot back like this. So I'm mirroring them. When I record and I do like this, I don't have to mirror. But <laughs> if I do, I get so confused. So I'm like, I have to choose just one. <laughs> so I'm just mirroring the whole time. So even though I don't have to, that's the way my brain works. All right, push down on the floor a little bit, especially if you're gliding too easily. This is actually, for me, pretty good. I have a little bit of resistance going forth and back here. A little bit of a balance challenge. Let's do four. Trying not to grip with my toes. Three. Oh, the hamstrings are working. Two. And one. All right, overhead press. Either use the small weights you have, like hand weights or your ball. We're not going to do a gazillion because I'm going to bring my heavy weight. So <laughs> I'm not going to lift a lot. Maybe you do more than I do. That's fine. So keep your core strong. Maybe some distance in between your legs. Lift up overhead and bring the weight down in front of your face. If you don't have a bar, just use your hands in the same way that I use my hands here, just going up and down, stopping somewhere at shoulder height. And maybe even a little bit less or a little bit not as far down if you have your easy hand weights or not too heavy hand weights. So I'm going to focus on a strong foundation, keeping my core in, not arching my back. That's why I like this kind of firm stance. Gonna lift up five, not lowering down too quickly. That also is a part of the workout. Four. Three. Two. Maybe we'll do something like this. One. In another, maybe fun way. Let's let's see. <laughs> so put your weight down and bring gliders. Now you need two of them. Or if you just have one piece of of uh, uh, newspaper, just make sure it's wide so you can both feet on it. <clears throat> now, uh, this is maybe a little bit advanced. You'll see. You'll try and then you'll see. <laughs> so if you just have one newspaper, you can take both legs in like this, knees again hovering over the floor and bring them out. Or if you want a little bit easier, just one knee at a time, almost like we did in the beginning when we warmed up, so you choose. Not gonna do a gazillion. I'm not keeping my my spine still. Keep pushing my hands down. Let's do six. Five. You hear the gliding, I hope. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Oh. 
shake your wrists and just keep keep the gliders nearby. We're gonna we're gonna draw a circle, but with the foot. So I hope I'm not really sure how much space I'm I'm taking here. Let's see. <laughs> so my right right leg is keeping my balance, left foot on the glider. So I'm sitting down like a kind of a squat, bringing the foot out or to the front, out and back, making sure this knee stays as stable and as strong as possible. So if you can't hold your balance, grab onto a chair or a wall, whatever you have nearby. If this leg fatigues completely, stand up. And then you might want to sit down. Now I'm getting into some challenges here because of my floor is kind of puzzled in. <laughs> kind of a, a puzzle actually is one. I kind of put them in together. All right, two more circles. This is one of my more creative moves. You can do it. If I can, you can. Alrighty, again, opposite leg. Left leg is holding our balance. Right foot coming out. If you feel, if you, for example, have had any, what is that called, the tendons that are crossing in your knees, or the ligaments it must be, you might feel this as you're pulling a little bit unevenly on your knee joint, then don't go as low. Maybe just go forth and back if you don't want to go for that circle. I'm kind of DJing my way around here. Wank, 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 wank. Because I'm a little bit mindful of my knees sometimes. It's, it's a bit tricky. Three more circles. Ugh. It's such a big difference if I push down on the floor or if I'm just, you know, kind of hovering over the floor kind of thing. Yep. We're going to do it again. One more time, both hands on a glider. If your floor is totally slippery, slippery, you might just, you know, take one hand down so you're sure not gonna fall. All right, plank on toes or knees. And then you're gonna do da, 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 a circle with each hand, core in. My back just cracked, but it was a nice feeling. So smaller circles, and please get some distance between your feet. To help you stabilize. Keep the hips still. Let's do four more. Four. Is there um, no plank? I know I do. I do some planks in this video, but it's just because it's so great with these gliders. So, but uh, not plank now. <laughs> Something else. Alrighty. So bar or oh, not bar, but gliders to the front. Then you lift up your core, bring the arms as far down behind your back as you can, push down, move them to the front. So this posture is almost like the one we did with the weight bar over our head. Only difference oh, is that now I have less weight, 
But if I lift high on my back, if I push down on the gliders, there's a huge difference. So if you have it in you, push down as you pull, both to the front and back. Such a great move for shoulder strength, back strength. And I haven't even mentioned, if you want to go more into it, lift your legs as well. Oh, how are you doing? Three more. Push down. gonna lift the hip up and down. I'm gonna use my bar to get enough challenge, so you can do that too. If you just have a hand weight, I find it sometimes difficult actually to, to get it, um, but you choose what works for you. Coming down on my back, bringing my somewhat heavy bar with me. <laughs> Hope my Microphone doesn't make too much noises as I move around here. So, feet on the floor, somewhat close to your hip. Lift up your thighs. So we don't want the, the bar to roll down on our head, so just keep it up. We're not gonna lift it. It's gonna be hold on our thighs. And then you're gonna lower down and lift up. And that's basically it. Lower down, slowly. Hovering over the floor, a lot of hovering today, <laughs> and lifting as high as you can, because that's where the strength is built. That's really in the height. So go up. Probably you're working out alone. So really go, and maybe you say, Ugh! or maybe you make a face. Do so. Whatever helps you to achieve your maximum effort here. <sighs> yep. You need a number? How much more? Go, go, high. <sighs> All right, let's do a number. Starting up on the top, let's do five. Lowering down, up, and four. Lift through your heels. Three. I want your buttocks to be noticed tomorrow. Two. High up. And the last one, impress yourself. <laughs> Sometimes I say, come on, lift up. And come down. Oh, that was a, in, my, in my hips, a tough one. So you can bring your, your weight to the side. You can't see all my mess here in front of me. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Come into your tabletop and let's just do a cat just to get a little bit of movement in here. Standing up. <sighs> Gliders under the feet. We're going to do that lunge thing again, but with a little bit of extra move. So you can, let's begin with the right foot this time. Glide on the right foot just to even things out. Glide the right foot back, push down. I have the heel lifted, push down, bending right knee, sorry, left knee. When you come up this time, you switch so that your, your heel reaches and then you do kind of a, what is this, forward squat thing. Coming back, toes tucked under, back. Coming up, heel. Kind of sit a little bit further down, reaching up. Maybe not all the way up, depending on how much you can. Going back. 
And the beautiful thing about all this is you can choose. You can go all in, all the way down. Or you can just make it halfway. You can make it one third. You do you and be proud of what you do. Don't look at me and think you have to do the same thing. You might do it more crazy than I do, you might not. Just do three more of these beautiful postures or moves. I guess a posture would be something you hold and a move will be more dynamic. So still learning that English language. My left thigh, last bit. Ouch. Oh, you feel it here, I hope. And be mindful but if, if you've moved the left leg out that you don't hang onto the right side or your left side here. So keep the hips in. One big breath, maybe a sip of water. I forgot to bring mine, so. Maybe you have done a little bit of drinking. So, switch. <sighs> Going back. I'm super mindful of my standing knee and leg. So, I have to admit, in my life, I have always been active, but there's also been a little bit of, I think it's called scarcity mentality in some of the things I've been doing. Because sometimes, you know, your back hurts or something happens, and then you get a little bit, uh oh, scared of hurting yourself. But what I've realized the last couple of years is that when you do things slow, and you notice what's going on. You keep the stability in those cues, like knee and toes in the same direction. When you keep your core in, when you move to the side, for example, there's almost nothing you can't do. Because if you tight up, tighten up, if you control the moves, really engage all the muscles, both the big ones, wherever they are, and the stabilizing structures in you, the chances of you hurting yourself if you work out like this or do yoga is not that big. But we need a little bit of body awareness, body attention, and maybe even body knowledge. Let's do two more, and let, let, let us go low. Come on, right knee all the way. Ah, stay low as you push left foot to the front, hip in. Because I was talking, I think I didn't go as deep because I was focusing on something else. <laughs> and this is, this is maybe this is maybe the danger of working out. That is, that sometimes when you teach, and the same, doing it, teaching, instructing, you can't focus <laughs> totally on what's going on. All right, we did these moves. We did them down as we lift up. We just need one more. We're gonna do handstand. Maybe up against the wall, maybe just like me. Put your hands down and then kick up. Maybe it's just like this and that's it. Try it, try it, try it, try it. Okay, I did a little bit of handstand when I was a, a kid. So sometimes I can get up there. I did more walking than standing on my hands. That was like the game of it. But, whoa, whoa, my plant. So this is the same as lifting up. So if you want to lift up the bar or the weight instead of this, go ahead. Maybe kick off with the, the awkward leg. Oh, I feel like that is super awkward for me. Just the last few kicks. You might even get a little bit out of breath. Woo. Oh, that was a great one to end on. Shake your wrist. Shake it, shake it, shake it. 
core exercise. Time is flying. So, coming down, get centered here on your back. And then you roll on to one side, the one that's best for you to watch the screen at, okay? I'm going to bring, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to bring my hand, the one that I'm leaning onto, the shoulder there, out like this. Then the other hand is supporting the head. I'm bending my knees slightly, hips stacked on top of each other. Then I lift up on the side like this and down. Lifting up. It's not a huge lift, but this part of my core is heavily involved, heavily involved. So if you can't do both legs, maybe just one leg going up like this, trying to stay aligned, almost like you got a, a wall behind your buttocks. And let's do fast up and slow down. Up, three, two, one. Up, three, two, four more. Oh, not lifting too much through the hand on the floor. That's why I have the palm facing up. Oh. Last one. Up, three, two, one. I know that this is hard if you haven't done it before. You need to find those muscles. That's going to work for you. Okay. Opposite side, you might just turn away from the screen. Okay, get yourself positioned. Hips on the floor. If your hip is hurting on the floor, maybe you need to double. If you have a yoga mat to do exercise on, maybe you need to double the mat if you feel it under your hip. Let's just do two up and two down to begin with, just to get a little bit of, you know, getting for acquainted with this posture. There we go again, posture. It's because I am the yoga instructor and I teach a lot of English, then they call everything postures. Okay. Let's do a quick up, slow down. Up, three, two, one. Three more. such a good exercise <sighs> all right let's continue on our backs for just more a little bit more traditional if you could say that exercise so I'm bringing you can either take one of your bar now that I have this hand weight I'm gonna bring it in between my knees I'm gonna keep my knees maybe directly over the hip if you're new to this maybe even don't <laughs> use a block Oh, I teach so much yoga. <laughs> the ball here or the weight. If you can, a little bit more down, but keep your core in. And then lift up with slow or small, like pushes up. <sighs> Pulses, that's what I was going for. <sighs> so the fact that I'm keeping a weight in between my knees, pulling my navel in, I have this resistance on my, my lower abs. And then I'm working into my top of my six pack. Rectus abdominis. Five, four, three, go high. Two, one. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, you can put the high weight down. Bring the right leg out to the side, almost like you would do this uh, stretch for your, for your glutes. But we're going to do a workout, a core exercise. So right leg is out to the side, and then you lift up and take your right elbow towards this, kind of going for a side bend kind of a thing, opening up, closing. So you see also my legs are moving a little bit. <sighs> Exhale as you kind of crunch. 
Now, please be aware I am not doing left elbow, right knee. I'm doing right elbow, right knee. I feel this in my left hip flexor. If you do that, also maybe go, don't go as low down. Four. Three. Two, supporting your head, one, opposite, okay, and don't cheat by pulling this knee in towards your chest, keep it out to the side, and if you have left knee and left elbow, look towards your right side. So I have a little bit of an arch in my back when I put my feet down, just a little bit, because then I kind of pull heavily in when I lift up. Five. Four. Three. Two. Great for the core. Come onto your belly and this will be one of the last. Let's just do two more exercises, so stay with me. I know this might be a little bit longer exercise or video than you think you have time for, but just know it makes sense. It makes perfectly sense. <laughs> Ooh, coming down, you can put your hands like this and your head on your hands and then cross your legs like this. I point my toes, I try to stretch out my legs somewhat, and then crisscrossing here. <laughs> Lifting the thighs, knees off as best as possible. Go for crossing six, five, four, going wide with the legs, three, two, one. Let's pause. Take a few breaths. I did say two exercises. We're just going to repeat this one before we do the last one. So if you're ready, lift up your legs, point the toes, go for a scissor thing. This time you might go a little bit slower. So crossing, going wide, crossing, going wide. Feel it in the back of your legs, your buttocks, your lower back. Four, three, two, go wide. One. On your belly, not on your belly, but on your back to get into the belly. The one that we often do, or the one that I often do in our listen to any Danish videos, crossing the legs, lift up the hip. And for those of you used to working out, you can take something in between your legs. I put my hands behind my head like that. But you lift up your hip just a bit, just a tat. Isn't that the British way of saying it? And then crossing. Oh. Someday, someday, I will try to do a video with my best British accent. <laughs> my two children, I have three, but my two uh, girls, they, I don't know where they got it from, but they can speak with perfect British accent when they speak, and they can also do an American one, but I'm like, <laughs> how did they learn that? I want that too. So cool. All right, lifting and twitch, twisting. Eight, Five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> oh, that was great. How are your body feeling right now? 
I would actually suggest if you just got time for one stretch today, one stretch, I would do the standing thigh stretch because that gets a little bit into the hip flexor as well. So something like this. Now, when you take your leg up, go for, if you have your left leg up, go for the, the middle of the buttocks. Don't take it to the other side. So you're kind of crossing like that. Just, just know that. <laughs> the same. So if we walk, we want to walk like this. We don't want to walk like this, right? Or bicycle. We want to bicycle the same way. I'm so nerdy, I know. Thank you so much for joining and for liking, saying a, a, a thing on, on here, following me on Instagram, Cross Yoga with Ria. That would be amazing. Have a, a wonderful, blessed day and hug yourself. You are beautifully made.